Thank you very much, Jan, Florian. Welcome to the second talk on the center stage today. And I'm looking very much forward to welcoming on stage Daniel, a longtime NEOS core team member. And with his topic today, he's going to show us that NEOS is not just about NEOS and flow, but also getting inspired by things happening outside of our own ecosystem. So please welcome on stage Daniel Lienard. So good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, as uh, just said, I'm not talking about uh, NEOS or the NEOS ecosystem today. I'm talking about something um, that I worked with it um, for a year now, um, which is a technology called the gRPC and how to build uh, microservice and services with it. Um, I thought uh, gRPC is uh, commonly known, but I talked to some people yesterday they, did, they didn't know it. Um, honest question, who did gRPC services or consumed some already? Ah, oh, there are some quite people. Uh, but, but I guess uh, we can um, learn something new today. So um, in this talk, uh, we start with some motivation, uh, why we started to use it uh, last year and what we can do with it. Um, then we'll dive into basics of gRPC and uh, protocol buffers, uh, exploring what they are and why they are essential for using, uh, for building efficient and scalable microservices. Uh, then we'll move on to the practical aspects of using PHP as a gRPC server. And finally, uh, we'll wrap up by looking into gRPC in action. And I want to showcase you how you can build your own server with the right tools uh, in just minutes. Okay. Start uh, with the motivation. Um, we at Punkti are a service agency, and we uh, bill all our working time uh, and book them and track them uh, to customers. And we had a pretty old uh, application, which was quite feature-rich for that. And last year, we want to rebuild that, because uh, the old one was old, was written for Windows, and was uh, virtualized on our Macs for about 10 years now. And this is the new one. Um, which really reacts pretty fast. And um, we wanted to have an API-first approach to build it. Um, so all the processing and, uh, uh, and the logic should be on the server. And we wanted to then build um, slim clients in Swift or in other languages for other platforms uh, to communicate with that server. And we also we want, we wanted to integrate uh, other services that are not the core domain of time tracking. Um, and we wanted to use gRPC for that communication. And as we are PHP developers by heart, a lot of us are, um, we wanted to build that GRP server, gRPC server with PHP. Um, especially, we want to use um, an application server that is called Roadrunner and, and a framework uh, that is capable to build gRPC servers, which is called Spiral. I will come to that, to that later. Let's start with gRPC, or better start with function calls. Um, in the local func function call that you all know, in this example, we have a login method that calls a user management object, for example. Um, in the local function call, we have the caller and the callee um, in the same application, maybe on the same thread, and it can use uh, memory to communicate, which is pretty fast and efficient. Um, in contrary to remote procedure calls, which looks for a developer just the same like local function calls, but it uses network to send messages uh, over to another server to execute the, the function there. And that, of course, uh, involves some latency and some uh, network things that have to go pretty fast, and then it feels like you um, would call the method locally. And that brings us to gRPC. Uh, gRPC is a remote procedure call, 
Um, it was developed by Google in 2016 um, as an internal project for efficient communication between the microservices and was later released as an open source project. Uh, the framework is used by lots of organizations, not only by Google, but also by Netflix and Juniper uh, to um, interconnect large microservices. And it's really popular. So what makes gRPC popular? Uh, first, it's built on HTTP 2, which is the successor of HTTP 1.1. Um, and with that, it has a lot of uh, benefits. Um, it enables multiple requests and re response uh, to be processed simultaneously on a single connection, a single network connection. That improves performance by reducing the number of required connections that have to uh, build up and, and reduces and re uses the network resource then effic efficiently. Uh, it also supports bidirectional streaming um, of data between clients and server which also allows efficient transmission of, of uh, even large amount of data. And it uses a compact and efficient uh, format, uh, which is called uh, protobuf, we come to that later, uh, that reduces the network bandwidth and improves performance and enables cross-language communication. And it allows the server to send multiple responses to a single um, request. Um, which improves performance by reducing the number of round trips. Um, that leads us to the flow types that GLPC offers for us. The first one is the simplest one. It's called the unarray flow type. It's just what we normally see for HTTP requests. We send one request to the server and we get one request back. Then we have uh, the server streaming flow type. Here we send one request to the server and the server answers with a message uh, with a stream of messages. Uh, which we can then redu uh, consume in the client one by one. We have the other way around. Uh, we, send, uh, one, we send a lot of uh, messages in one stream to the server and upload, for example, and we get one request back. And then we have the bidirectional streaming between uh, both the client and the server, which enables real-time real communication between two endpoints. Another great thing about gRPC is that it has official libraries for basically all languages that you might know that, or that you want to use. Um, and um, yeah, additionally, it, has, it also has support for PHP. Then I want to um, compare this gRPC to something that you might know better, SOAP and REST. Uh, let's start with SOAP. Uh, it's a bit unfair because SOAP is rather old. It's, it's uh, about 25 years old by now. Um, it uses XML for communication, which is quite bulky and uh, therefore very slow and needs a lot of um, uh, needs a lot of space. Um, but the, the benefits of SOAP is that it's commonly used. You will find more endpoints that you uh, could use SOAP with it, and it's I guess better documented. But the benefits of gRPC, on the other hand, is what I already mentioned. It's high performant. Uh, it's super efficient. It has these streaming mechani mechanisms, which re really makes them uh, it's superior to um, XML RPC or SOAP. And it's really, really um, more easy to use. And then we have REST. Um, I have it also on that slide. But REST isn't a gRPC in general, because you cannot execute any kind of uh, remote procedure call, it's CRUD oriented, oriented. Normally, you only have CRUD operations on REST. OK, what we can we use that gRPC for? Um, generally, it's designed for microservices. So it can handle high volumes of traffic and data. Um, its use of the protocol buffers and HTTP2 uh, makes it ideal for cloud native applications and containerized environments. Um, it has a low, land, low latency and it has a f high throughput design, uh, which also makes it well suitable for high performance computing, such as uh, scientific simulation or financial modeling or such things. And also for IoT, um, because of its multiplexing, uh, multiplexing and if it's, uh, of its uh, 
um, possibility to run on devices with limited resources. It offers inter-service communication. Um, as I said, you can write your services in any language you like. And it offers real-time communication by its bi-directional streaming. So when this fe feature and this uh, technique is, is so great, why don't we use it on our regular basis uh, by developing uh, web applications? Um, the problem is that gRPC uses um, HTTP2 primitives that are not exposed to the, uh, the, the programming language, so it's not too easy to use them in our JavaScript application. But there is an option, though, um, which is called gRPC Web. It's a JavaScript implementation for gRPC for browser clients. Um, it uses a proxy by default in gRPC Web as Envoy. Uh, to proxy HTTP connections through HTTP2 to our gRPC server. Uh, the downside is that it only supports unary communication and server streaming and not bidirectional streaming or client streaming. So that's it for gRPC. Let's come to the IDL, the inter interface division language, um, which is called protocol buffers or protopuff. Um, protocol buffers is a language agnostic like gRPC. It's a binary serialization format and offers several advantages uh, of traditional text-based um, communication protocols um, like XML or JSON. Um, it is default, the default format for communication in gRPC, but you can use JSON, um, of course, uh, as well, but um, protocol buff has a lot of advantages. Um, the format is, uh, it uses a, a fully defined uh, schema to ensure that data is typed and strongly validated. Um, it has a compact binary format uh, that is high efficient in terms of data site and transmission speed. In fact, um, it's about 10 times smaller and 100 times faster than XML. Um, protocol buffers are designed to be used across multiple languages. Um, which, which enables seamless communication between different systems and servers written in different languages. It all allows to have documentation embedded in the schema definition, we see that later, and it allows for schema evaluation, ev ev <laughs> evolution, uh, which makes it possible to change your API um, without having to deprecate it and building a new one. So, um, yeah, let's have a look at it. Uh, you can see here a protobuf definition for a user message. Um, in the upcoming slides, I want to show you some service that uh, sends a request to a server, a search request on the, on the server, and you get a list of users back. And this is the definition, which is pretty simple for a small user object. You can see here we have four simple types, uh, one integer, uh, three strings. Um, and you can, but you can use a lot of other formats. Yeah? You can use bool and float and double, whatever you like. And there is a great uh, description on protobuf dev where you can see which protobuf uh, um, property types are then, um, uh, are then compiled uh, to which types in which language. That's pretty great. And then, uh, as you see, each field um, has a unique number which is counted up here. And these field numbers are used to identify your fields in the message binary format. That means if your format uh, is used, you cannot change this, uh, these numbers. Um, otherwise, it gets completely wrong. Um, yes. So as I said, you can um, document the protobuf file inline. Uh, that means you can just add some comments. And that's pretty great because uh, there is um, a Proto-C plugin. Proto-C is the uh, uh, protocol buffer compiler that normally generates stops for your languages, but it also can generate uh, documentation in HTML, JSON, DocBook, uh, Markdown, in whatever you want. So you, do, you can write your documentation with your code so it's, it stays consistent and you can build the documentation if you need one. So, evolving message, 
I mean, changing your API is pretty simple. If you want to add a new field, you can just add it here. Um, you see, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to uh, count up the numbers. You can use any uh, number you like. There are some reserve, uh, reserved numbers by gRPC, but um, it's unlike unlikely that you hit them. Um, so that would mean um, you have a new version of your API, and it could happen that client and server, the caller and the callee, have different versions of that uh, put above definition. What happens then? Uh, if a caller has an older version which hasn't that feel, the field, that means that the callee, the server, um, on a client server request, uh, will just add a default value. For example, for bool, it's false. There is also a list of default values. On the other hand, if the client sends it and the server doesn't know of it, it is, it is just ignored. So you can evolve on that message format without having to change all uh, participants on the communication simultaneously. If you want to remove a field, um, you have basically two options. The one thing is you can deprecate that field. Um, that uh, would lead to a warning on uh, each participant that uses that field, or you can just remove it. Um, that has a bit, a bit of a problem because um, if you remove it, no one knows of it. Uh, so it could happen that uh, another developer reuses that field number. And that would lead to serious problems, security issues, uh, data processing problems, and I guess uh, absolutely debugging nightmares. And to avoid this, uh, you can um, add reserved header and reserve that field. So if someone uses that field again, the Proto C compiler uh, would neglect to compile that protobuf file. Okay, that's a simple message. Um, to make that a complete protobuf definition, we, we need some header lines. Uh, we need um, the first line to uh, define the syntax version. It's proto3, uh, which is the current uh, version. And then we can add, add some language-specific specific options. Um, they don't affect the meaning of the message, but uh, they can be used um, at compile time uh, to compile our um, our stubs. In this case, for PHP, we can add the namespaces where the stubs uh, should be placed in. And then there is some uh, package information uh, to bind up uh, the API in a single package. So for our, um, for our use case and for our demo case, we need some additional messages. We need a search request, which is pretty simple. It uh, just contains uh, by a search term. And uh, we need if we request a server, we don't uh, want to have only one single user back. We, have, we want to have a list of users back. Therefore, we have that user collection, which has a repeated user field to be returned. So with the messages in place, uh, we now can define our service. And again, it's pretty easy. Uh, we say we have a user service, and there is one RPC command that takes a user search, search request and returns a user collection. And that's all you have to uh, define. It's about 20 lines, and um, your uh, um, gRPC service is set up. So now uh, we want to use it. And if we want to use it um, with PHP, we have some additional problems to solve. The, the first thing is that um, it's pretty easy to build gRPC clients with put above definitions. Um, but it's kind of hard to build servers on your own. It's great to have some uh, environment, some uh, framework that does that for you or supports you. So you need a framework for that. And uh, second, advanced gRPC um, features like bidirectional streaming are not really possible to build reliable on PHP. Uh, we need also some, some support for that. For that. And first and most important, um, now that we have this um, very fast and efficient communication protocol, we need something, some PHP application that uh, come, uh, that keep up, keeps up with that. Um, I mean, it doesn't make sense to have uh, such a fast protocol and then have a PHP application that takes two seconds uh, to respond on a request. So we need a good fitting solution for that. 
Um, all that brings us to Roadrunner. Um, Roadrunner is an open source PHP application server. Um, basically, it does things like, like PHP FPM um, that handles high loads and increases performance on PHP application. It, uh, development, its development is driven by a company called Spiral Scout. And it's designed to work with a variety of PHP frameworks like Symfony, Laravel, and their own Spiral framework. And um, there is a blog post of Christopher Lubeck. He also managed uh, to, uh, to make it happen with Neos. So what does that Roadrunner do for us? Uh, imagine we have a, um, a typical client request lifecycle. Uh, it goes to our PHP FPM. We start our PHP application. And the first thing we have to do is some, is some framework initialization. We, de, we, re, we read the configuration. Uh, we create the, uh, the objects for our common libraries and our user libraries. And then we read some caching. Um, I would call that the bootstrapping phase of our application. Then um, we come to the entry point, we do some routing, we, we uh, end up in our controller, we have some, uh, um, we have some domain logic code, uh, we wrap up the response, and we send it back to the server. This is the actual work that we are doing. And most of the time, the bootstrapping phase uh, consumes lots more, a lot more time than the actual work. Think of yeah, some information that we can just return from our controller that, that is pretty fast, but till we end up at that controller, that can consume time. There are um, two um, approaches to make that happen, that we can just uh, start with our entry point and neglect all the bootstrapping phase. The one thing is um, a non-blocking approach, like you may know it from React PHP, where, where we have some event loop uh, that consumes our requests and then uh, answers, it, answers it non-blocking. The problem may, uh, may arise when we try to use blocking resources like databases or something. Uh, then we can, th then it, it can uh, get very complicated. And then we have this Roadrunner approach, uh, which just um, keeps PHP workers alive between incoming requests. This means that uh, we can completely eliminate the bootloading time, and th that offers complete new possibilities. We can put a lot of um, work in our bootstrapping because it's only executed once, and that significantly speeds up our, our heavy application. Um, we have an example here. Um, I implemented requests, and um, you can see the first request uh, takes up 30 milliseconds, which is quite fast, but all consecutive um, requests are um, under one millisecond, which I guess is uh, really great. Um, this uh, Roadrunner server is built in Go, and it we get some additional advantages for it. It has uh, plugins that we can enable or disable. Um, of course, it, it has an HTTP plugin where we can build our REST service or we can uh, generate some HTML. It has the gRPC service. It has supports for jobs, um, which is a high efficient plugin uh, which enables to automatically manage tasks from various queue storages like Redis. And that results in a high concurrent and scalable event bus. Um, they say they are capable of consuming about or, and, and distributing about 100,000 messages or events per second. Uh, then we have uh, PSR 16 compatible uh, key value store. Then they have uh, endpoints to get the status of the system and also get metrics to see which workers perform um, in which manner, and you can monitor them. That's pretty great. And um, it has a cron worker, so you don't have to configure your cron. You get a ticks from the server itself. And uh, it has an integration with Centrifugo. I don't know if you know that. It's a real-time messaging server for real-time messaging communication. So, and above that, um, I used or we used the Spiral framework. Um, it's a really robust and powerful framework by the same company, um, or driven by the same company. It's also open source, um, and it's it's 
built for development and maintaining uh, medium to large size enterprise application, and it's really great and straightforward and slim. And they say it's two times faster than two times faster than any other um, framework out there. I haven't tested, but it's pretty fast. Um, it pro provides an, an, an easy integration with gRPC, and yeah, I want to show that to you. Um, Spiral has uh, different app skeletons for different pur purposes, and there is an app skeleton for building gRPC, which basically is um, a composer file that, 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 had, that has all the dependencies in it. And I can use Composer Create Project. It loads the dependencies, and then it also downloads the Roadrunner server, which is fitting to your environment, in this case, for my Mac. Next thing to build up the server is uh, to download the Proto-C binary. There is also a Roadrunner command for that, uh, which searches for the correct uh, binary for our system and just loads that. Uh, down uh, with that. Th that's all we need to compile our stub files. Next thing is, is uh, we can use uh, the Spiral framework. Uh, it's a console command um, to generate our service, and uh, we get the DTOs and the, um, the message uh, stubs that we can use later. You see here in the message uh, in the message folder, we have one stub for all for all our messages, user, user collection, and so on. We, has a, we have a user service client that we can use to consume the service, and we have a user service interface that we can implement to build our server. And that's pretty simple, and all we have to do, uh, we have to add a new class and implement that service. Um, I made it pretty simple here, so I just uh, create a new user collection, I create a new user, add it to the, that user collection. That's the point where you no normally request your database for users and so on. You get the point. Um, but that's all we have to do to build our, to build our uh, server endpoint. We don't have to build our own DTOs, our routing, everything. It's all done. Next we can do um, is configure our Roadrunner uh, server. It's done in YAML. Um, and this also is pretty simple. We, we uh, define that we want to use the gRPC plugin uh, where it should listen and which protofiles it should use uh, to validate the incoming requests. There are lots of options that we could add. We can fine-grain configure our GLPC service, uh, configure boundaries, and, all, and so on, but they are really same defaults. We don't have to use it. So we are done. Uh, now we can start um, our GLPC, uh, our uh, Roadrunner server, just with rrserv. And we can see uh, it has now po two ports open. The one is uh, general RPC. Uh, port for communicating between PHP and Roadrunner, and the, one, the other one is the gRPC service. So if we want to test if our service works well, uh, there is a neat tool which uh, is called gRPC Web UI. It's also a Go application. We can uh, download, if, uh, download it with Go, and all we then have to do is uh, start it uh, by pointing to our same uh, proto-definition file. And we, what we then get is a browser application which, all, which already knows about our service. We can select uh, the service, we can select the method. It, it shows us which uh, fields we can put in and which fields are required. And then we can click on Invoke and get a response back. So no reading of documentation. It's just everything uh, resourced from the proto file. So that wouldn't be a NEOS talk if there would be no NEOS involved. So um, I think I can uh, build some, uh, some eel helper that requests a service and gets information back. But it's uh, basically completely independent uh, if you use it in NEOS or if you use it in plain PHP. There is a, this protocol um, profiler um, command, which is a bit bulky. Um, it defines. Uh, where, we f where, where we can find the protofiles, uh, where we should put the classes, uh, which plugin we should use 
to build um, the stubs. So it's the PHP plugin, and where we can find the service proto, the service proto is, is the file where all other files are included, the endpoint of this protocol. And again, uh, we get uh, the client stubs generated. Um, all the, the methods, the method files are there, and the user service client is also there. And this user service client can be used directly um, by just building a new um, object of it, defining where we can find the endpoint. Um, then you, you might notice that um, we have to set the credentials. Um, in this case, I built an open, uh, unauthenticated un un uh, endpoint. So I have to find that it is an insecure channel, and then I get various other. Can I get add various other options like a user agent and such, and that's all. Now I can request the service. I get objects back where I can traverse on it. In this case, I get a user collection, um, and I can respond. I can um, return that user collection, for example, to Fusion, and then uh, iterate over it and use it. So, that was a quite fast interaction, uh, introduction into uh, gRPC. Uh, I hope I made you curious and you want to use it in your project as well. So, do you have any questions? Thank you, Daniel. I already have a few questions. If you still want to submit one, please do so via the app. The first one, do you know if, it's, if it is possible in the future to use Apache 2 and FPM with gRPC? Um, I guess that isn't, that isn't a problem with that limitations I just said. Um, you can only... Uh, you can only use the unarray um, and maybe the server streaming uh, flow types. Um, one thing that is missing in the presentation is that Roadrunner, Roadrunner also um, provides some Go code um, that provides the server streaming um, flow type as well. That's the part where it is handy to use that system, but I guess you also could use it with Apache and PHP FPM. All right. Another question. Do you know if it is possible to create a gRPC server with pure PHP? Yeah, if you want to do it the hard way, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> because, um, yeah, again, um, if you don't rely on that um, additional flow types, it's all pure PHP. The, the server is written in PHP, um, but yeah, I guess you, that you have to do a lot of things that I I wouldn't do. Um, basically, <laughs> I guess no one really writes PHP code without using any framework because you have to repeat so much that you gain from framework for free. All right. How can I build a pagination when, for example, querying users? That's pretty simple. In this case, you can just add um, a pagination uh, field to our search request. Um, message, and then you have to do this, the pagination on the server side and respond uh, with the information. In this case, you maybe want also add some uh, count or uh, total count information on the response type. Okay, thank you. And how did you integrate Proto C and other tools into your CI workflow? Um, yeah, we use uh, a Docker for uh, developing locally, and uh, we use the same Docker setup in our CI pipeline to spin it up and then spin it up and then compile the protobuf files there. Okay, there is another question here. Would gRPC, would the gRPC protocol replace the other protocols? And if not, when should we use it? And when the others? Yeah, I basically would replace all. <laughs> Especially, I would replace all uh, SOAP uh, services with gRPC. I, I don't know if you ever worked with SOAP service, but it's really pure pain. 
Um, and I also would um, replace most of the REST APIs because a lot of our REST use cases are server-to-server -server communication from one backend to another, and that is where uh, gRPC really shines um, because you get a lot of benefits for it. As said, you, have, uh, you don't have to build your own stub code, DTOs, uh, request and response code. It's just free, and the definition is totally clear. You can send the protobuf file to someone else, and it's definitely clear what should come out. It's not like a Swagger, a Swagger documentation where something uh, is wrong or missing or interpretable. It's just totally clear, and I really like that format. Okay, and then the last questions, they relate to flow. Any plans to integrate what, you cho what you've shown with Flow? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess we need, we need to work on Flow in general in that manner. I've, um, I've seen response times, and you have seen response time, times from that uh, Spiral and Roadrunner um, combination that I think that we don't get uh, in flow anytime soon. Um, and I would say um, not any tool is, uh, uh, you know, that hammer and nail thing. Um, I guess flow is capable of a lot of things, and it's really great, and it's a good foundation for NEOs. But sometimes it's worth to looking on other frameworks to use them, and especially to gain um, inspiration what we can uh, uh, implement in Flow, but I guess that is not a, a top priority to be implemented in Flow in any time soon if you don't like to implement it, <laughs> of course. So there was one question, will Spiral replace Flow? But I guess that... I <laughs> guess not. <laughs> but I guess it, it has really has uh, some um, things that we can think of. There are really some um, uh, configuration uh, possibilities that are way more straightforward and um, easier as in Flow, and maybe we can take some ideas from there. So if you have any further questions regarding gRPC, Daniel will be around. And for all of you who are very into the PHP framework questions, I think you heard Robert talk about Flow and the future uh, during the keynote, so do go to Robert and uh, Carsten and the other Flow developers and talk to them about the PHP framework. Thank you very much, Daniel, for your presentation. Please don't Thank forget you. to rate the talk and the app. Thank you.